and news at noon starts right now. Happening right now on Capitol Hill, President Trump's impeachment trial. It's day two of the Democrats' opening arguments. We are monitoring what's going on in Washington, D.C. There is an ABC special that may start at any moment, and we will go to that as soon as it happens. Meanwhile, a 27-year-old man was fatally shot while driving, and police continue to search for the suspects responsible. This happened in the 10,400 block of Renova that's on the south side, on, and it happened last night. Sarah Costa tells us how neighborhood witnesses described that shooting to police. Shots fired from inside the cab of this black Ford pickup truck. It's what residents in a south side neighborhood told police they heard just before 7 p.m. Wednesday. Those shots hitting and killing a 27-year-old man driving the truck on the 10,400 block of Renova. San Antonio police responding, collecting the evidence left behind. Also unseen was SAPD's NCID, CSI and homicide teams to investigate this year's 11th deadly shooting. Witnesses also telling police that shortly after they heard the gunshot from inside the truck, two men were seen getting out of the truck, going to the driver's side, then taking off. Police say those men were last seen running off heading north on Renova Street. Police say this investigation remains open as they continue to search for both of those men. From the South Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a suspect facing charges after a stabbing at a playground. Just before five yesterday, Shirts police were called to the 500 block of Westchester Drive at the Shirts Playscape because there were reports of a fight. But when officers got there, they didn't find anyone fighting. However, a parent then reported that her son was stabbed. That victim taken to the hospital. Police say that they did identify a suspect and file charges against the person. Officers did not name the suspect, however. Also new this noon, a suspect in a deadly shooting on the southeast side has now been arrested. Police say they charged Jose Maria Galindo with manslaughter. Officers say the shooting happened early yesterday morning on East South Cross at the Pecan Valley Apartments. The victim died at a nearby hospital. Police say five other people were in the apartment when she was shot. It is not clear if anyone else is facing charges. The victim in a medical center shooting has died. The medical examiner says that the victim is 15-year-old Danny Hernandez. Police say he died last Friday. He was shot in an apartment complex in the 5900 block of Eckert last Friday as well. A 17-year-old was taken into custody. A high school teacher and coach facing charges. Police say he had a sexual relationship with a student. Officers tell us that Jose Eduardo Hernandez was charged with inappropriate relationship between educator and student. According to an arrest affidavit, police spoke with uh, he allegedly the alleged victim back on January 10th. Police say she told them that she had been having a sexual relationship with Hernandez for eight months. Officers say the girl was able to show them pictures and videos proving the relationship. This morning, we are getting a closer look at the man accused of breaking into the Bear County Courthouse overnight. Bear County deputies were called shortly after midnight after security guards saw the suspect inside the courthouse through surveillance footage. That suspect identified as 40 year old Michael Bass. Deputies say Bass broke the glass of the front entrance door on Dolorosa Street to get inside. And they say he later tried to escape through a second story window, but was unsuccessful. Deputies found him hiding inside of a closet and took him into custody. He's facing charges of burglary of a building. Five people are in the hospital after a crash on the northwest side. Bear County deputies say an 18-wheeler hit a minivan on Highway 16 just past Loop 1604 last night around 930. They tell us that the truck was pulling out onto the highway, but the driver did not see the minivan because of fog. Responders took all five people in the van to Bamsey, where the driver remains in critical condition. The other four passengers did not have serious injuries, and the driver of the truck was not injured. Taking place right now, a funeral mass for District Court Judge Ray Olivari. It's happening at the Church of the Blessed Sacrament on Oblate Drive. Last night, friends and family gathered at San Fernando Cathedral for a rosary, many describing him as the people's judge. Olivari presided over the 144th Criminal District Court and was in the middle of his four-year term prior to his passing after a battle with cancer. He also served as a probation officer criminal law practitioner. Now to the latest on that coronavirus scare. China is taking steps to try to contain the outbreak of that deadly virus that has already affected hundreds. Officials have closed off the city of Wuhan, which has over 11 million residents. 
ABC's Kana Whitworth is in Washington State, where the first patient of America is being treated. The one confirmed U.S. patient is here at a hospital in a biocontainment unit, and he will remain there until the CDC says that he can be released. Doctors are using a specialized robot to help treat him that also minimizes their exposure. Officials have now identified the flight that he was on into the U.S., and they are alerting all passengers. This as some cities in China are going on lockdown. In Wuhan, they have enacted a travel ban after this virus sickened more than 600 people and and killed nearly 20. Anybody that got out of Wuhan before that ban went into effect will be funneled through one of five U.S. airports that are performing mandatory screenings. Still, doctors I spoke with here say they do expect to see more cases of the coronavirus here in the United States because it just spreads so quickly. Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Everett, Washington. St. Mary's wants to start an eSports varsity team. Why they decided to create the new team, coming up. We have been monitoring what's going on in Washington, D.C. as the impeachment hearings are now resuming at this hour. Yeah, we're going to go to that right now. But for those of you who want to continue to watch us here at KSAT 12, you can do that at KSAT.com right now. We're going to take a brief pause as we make that technological transition. Stand by. Fortnite, Overwatch, and League of Legends. These are all popular video games that attract millions of gamers. Gamers play games like these at highly competitive tournaments in an industry that is reaching billions of dollars. And now St. Mary's University is making eSports a varsity athletic team. Sarah Costa spoke with the university about its plans for the program this fall. It's the fastest growing sport in the world. The gaming world is on fire right now. A lot of people love gaming. It's why St. Mary's University is making an electronic sports or esports varsity team under its athletic department by fall 2020. The team will have uniforms, its own gaming arena, and will need to keep their grades up to play. And this is just about bringing this, this, uh, this sport to campus. It's something that I think is going to get great interest from all of our students. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a total gamer. Like freshman Sam Vega, who says he is definitely going to be trying out for the team in the fall and just loves to be behind the console. First person shooters to multiplayer uh, football games. I think he'd be really good for some of the students, especially some who aren't necessarily like athletes, but they really like video gaming. Then they can feel like they have like kind of a sport. The new gaming arena is going to be in the heart of the campus, right here on the second floor of the University Center, where students can easily walk by, watch, and cheer on those gaming athletes. It doesn't look like much now, but the athletic department plans on putting in new glass doors and possibly windows along with black and blue paint and 15 to 20 gaming consoles. Bailey Crombie is a freshman soccer player at St. Mary's. He says he thinks it's really cool that the university is bringing in more diverse programs. Whenever they think of sports, they think of physical activity and everything, but big part of sports is the mental game and just being able to prepare and focus and I know definitely in those video games it requires a lot of focus and mental preparation. This is about connecting with future rattlers that want to come here and we need to bring things here that connect so that this school can still be here in 2040 and 2050. The team's arena will be done sometime this spring. The university will have about 20 to 30 members. It's going to hold tryouts at the end of the year and the beginning of next fall. And the athletic department is also searching for a coach for the team. Could you imagine getting a scholarship to play video games? I know. <laughs> My son is might be considering St. Mary's now if he saw this story instead of LSU. Yeah, oh. it's in the mix. It's, it's amazing to me how good those kids are. Oh, yeah. Because uh, and I it's try, competitive, man. It is. I try to play video games and I'm not good at it, but it, it does take a level of skill. Yeah. Hmm. There you go. Stick right. to basketball. I think I will, as long as uh, as long as these joints hold up. <laughs> uh, well, the weather's beautiful out there. It is. It's really gorgeous today, and we're going to put together a couple days here of some pretty nice weather. I will caution you, though, mold has jumped up even higher today. It's at 15. But your 000. voice sounds better. It's getting better. There's there's going to be improvement. I'm feeling confident by tomorrow we're going to be back to 100%. But oh, yeah. uh, mold is there. A mountain cedar dropped out of the pollen count today. We're also watching the drought monitor. This is in just today shows us that, well, there's not a lot of change here. We saw some minor improvements. This does not take into account yesterday's rainfall, but 
it does take into account our last rainfall event and it helped us a little bit. Still a severe drought though across parts of South Texas, even an extreme drought. So we still could use some rain. But before we get our next chance, we're going to deal with some pretty great weather. That includes today. 35% of the state is in drought. One week ago, it was 37%. So again, a little bit of an improvement there. The aquifer is up half a foot. It saw improvements from yesterday's rainfall, 672.9. You know what? That's a pretty good number considering where we are. That's 3.7 feet above the January average. So the aquifer has been holding pretty steady and doing pretty well. Time lapse shows we had clear skies this morning. We thought we might see some fog that happened overnight, but it cleared out pretty quickly. The morning commute was just fine. Dew point is at 47. Winds out of the north northwest at about 12 miles per hour. Winds are going to be a little bit gusty for now. They'll call them some tonight. Here's the setup. The water vapor always shows us these circulations in the atmosphere very nicely. So you can pick up where our, our counterclockwise spin is right there. So there is the low pressure system. We are now on the back side of it. So we're getting more of that dry flow coming out of north Texas. And that's going to usher in some drier dew points gradually. And that's going to, again, make for some really comfortable weather. Uh, the radar and satellite shows we've got showers and storms from Memphis right along the Mississippi River all the way down to New Orleans. St. Louis seeing a little bit of snow. Cold enough there. We're still seeing some snow flying up in the Great Lakes, too, uh, out ahead of that system. As we mentioned, dew points are starting to fall off a little bit. Dew points are in the 20s and 30s off to our north and west. That drier air mass is slowly working in dew points are in the upper 40s here in town but does some drier dew points off uh, into the northwest into the hill country and temperatures just about ideal i mean this time of year to get upper 60s low 70s that is nice 66 in uvalde 66 eagle pass and 64 right now in kerrville there is a little bit of a, of a gusty wind out there gusting to 21 miles per hour here in town those numbers should come down a bit as we get into the evening uh, forecast high temperature today, 72. You'll find some 60s in the hill country in the mid 70s down to our south and west. All right, we're going to fast forward here. Next couple days, sunny skies, no problem. So let's go to Saturday, 7 o'clock. Clouds start to come back in. This is 7 o'clock in the morning. So Saturday is going to be a little bit more of a mostly cloudy day. And then by 5 o'clock, we'll start to see some showers develop. There is a small window in which we could get some rain Saturday afternoon into early, early Sunday morning. And then this clears out by, say, 7 o'clock. Rain's out of here, and the clouds clear out by midday Sunday. So we're back in the sun. If you have weekend plans, I wouldn't worry too much about this. Just know that Saturday evening there could be a couple of light showers around. Breezy, sunny today, 72. West Northwest Julie winds 10 to 15. And we'll go 68 tomorrow, 64 Saturday with that 30% chance of rain. 71 on Sunday, 71 Monday. This is good January weather. I was just about to say, this is one of the reasons why I love living here in South Texas, because back home in New York right now, I would probably be miserable. Yeah, you would. Yeah. And uh, not cold. I, I love the idea that today I walked out of the house without a jacket or even a yes. sweater, yeah. wasn't wearing boots. You know, it's just a spring day. Well, I'll say we're a little spoiled this year. Yeah. This uh, is not every year January shape up like this, but this is good. Yeah, well, okay. I'll definitely take it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. All right, three American first responders were killed when their airplane crashed in Australia. The Americans were on an aerial water tanker helping to put out the extensive wildfires there. ABC's James Longman has the story. These wildfires have been raging for weeks, but now they've claimed the lives of Americans in Australia to help. Three U.S. firefighters on board a C-130 air tanker have been killed as their plane went down in what's being described as a fireball. They were in the New South Wales region of the country dropping water over a particularly difficult fire zone. This means the flames have now claimed more than 30 lives, along with the millions of acres destroyed and wildlife lost. We've also seen flames spreading to the nation's capital in Canberra, thick columns of smoke rising above the airport, forcing parts of it to shut down. 200 Americans are there helping, but that number will go up. We're still only halfway through the summer and those scorching temperatures set to continue. James Longman, ABC News in London. This afternoon, three people, including a nine-year-old boy, remain hospitalized after a shooting in a busy part of downtown Seattle. That shooting happened last night. Police say several people opened fire after an argument outside of a McDonald's during the evening commute. One person was killed, a total of seven hurt. This was the third shooting in downtown Seattle in just two days. A woman convicted of playing a role in her boyfriend's suicide was released from jail today. Michelle Carter was convicted of involuntary manslaughter back in 2014. 
She was released from a Massachusetts prison today. Now, that's just a few months short of her 15-month sentence. Carter was 17 years old when 18-year-old Conrad Roy III took his own life. A judge decided that Carter was responsible for his death because she, via a phone call, convinced him to go through with the suicide. Now to the firestorm rocking the Grammys this year. Just three days before the show, the ousted CEO of the Recording Academy says she was pushed out after exposing nomination rigging and sexual harassment. ABC's Trevor Alt has that story. This morning in an ABC News exclusive, now ousted Recording Academy CEO Deborah Dugan, the first female chief, expounding on her bombshell allegations ahead of the Grammys. I hate that I'm in this situation uh, because I'd much rather be here talking about the artists and the music. But um, I can't help but have to say there are conflicts of interest. Dugan claims she was pushed out after revealing irregularities in the nomination process. In a 46-page discrimination complaint, Dugan alleges the voting process behind the awards is ripe with corruption involving secret committees, which she claims push forward artists with whom they have relationships. Dugan also claims the board manipulates the nominations process to ensure that certain songs or albums are nominated when the producer wants a particular song performed form during the show. Yeah. It's very serious, and I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I could make a difference. The Recording Academy firing back, alleging it was Dugan who created a toxic and intolerable work environment, adding it immediately launched independent investigations to review both Miss Dugan's potential misconduct and her subsequent allegations. Dugan denies their allegations and also says she was sexually harassed by the Academy's general counsel, who categorically denies her allegations. Deborah Dugan claims the Recording Academy is a boys' club and says the Grammys have a long-standing problem with gender equality. The women on the Academy's executive board say her allegations are heartbreaking and that the claim the Academy is a boys' club is untrue. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Now on to an illness that has infected hundreds of people and killed at least 17 in China. It's now been confirmed in the U.S. U.S. officials now urging travelers to practice enhanced precautions. So that leaves us with a question. What is the Wuhan coronavirus and how is it spread? Our Eric Hernandez explains. A new Chinese coronavirus, a cousin of the SARS virus, can be spread between humans, according to a scientist appointed by the government. Now officials in China are racing to contain the Wuhan coronavirus by increasing the number of infrared temperature screening areas in public spaces. The outbreak has spread to at least five countries, including Thailand, Japan, South Korea, and now the U.S. Coronaviruses are a large group of viruses common among animals. In rare cases, they can be transmitted from animals to humans, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The viruses can make people sick, usually with a mild to moderate upper respiratory tract illness, similar to a common cold. Symptoms include a runny nose, cough, sore throat, possibly a headache, and maybe a fever which can last for a couple days. There are a handful of human coronaviruses that are known to be deadly, including Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, better known as SARS. Right now, there are no vaccines to protect against this family of viruses, but the National Institutes of Health in the U.S. are working on one to combat Wuhan coronavirus. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. In your consumer news, a scam alert from FedEx. It has to do with suspicious emails and a text that's going around. Yesterday, the company tweeted an alert about recent scams where people reported receiving texts and emails that appear to be from FedEx. The messages say they have a package and then they give you a link. FedEx says the messages are not from them. The company advises people to delete any suspicious messages. FedEx also says people should report the emails and the texts to them using the email uh, address of abuse at FedEx.com. Fashion retailer Express is joining the list of stores planning to close more locations. It now says 91 stores will be shut down. This comes after a disappointing holiday shopping season. 31 stores will be closed in the next week and the rest 
are going to be shut down over the next two years. Shake Shack says it's been testing out four day work weeks for managers. The company CEO says there are a lot of benefits, including saving parents money on child care. Right now, the shortened week is only available in about 30 percent of Shake Shack U.S. locations. They're considering, though, expanding it to more stores. The company says their goal is to encourage people to grow within the company and eventually become managers themselves. Jelly Belly releasing a new product, Jelly Belly Sparkling oh, Water. This mm. is not good. <laughs> no, like the jelly beans, it will come in a variety of flavors, but unlike the jelly beans, it will be calorie free. Oh, okay. Okay. The carbonated beverage has natural flavors, no sugars, and no sweeteners. It will be available in eight flavors to start, including orange sherbet, pina colada, pink grapefruit, just to name a few. Jelly Belly Sparkling Water will initially be available online and at 265 stores in the Midwest. I'm confused. <laughs> it has natural flavors, no sugars and no sweeteners. How can that be a Jelly be Belly product? I don't know, but it's I'm top secret. I'm willing to try it out though, because well, I love the Jelly Belly. <laughs> my husband's a huge Jelly Belly fan, and I have a feeling this is going to be on the grocery list. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What about flavors? yours? You like jelly bellies? Uh, I do. I like jelly beans. Can't say that I'm a huge sparkling water fan, but hey. <laughs> this may change out. you. Yeah, this, this, this may be the turning point. All right. All right. It's yeah. a nice day to drink some sparkling water, though. It's Man, this nice is, outside. This is as good as it gets. I mean, Why are not, we here at work? I know, right? Got to pay the bills. It's one of those days you can roll down the windows. And oh, yeah. You let it go because uh, it's just that comfortable outside. Uh, let's take a look at the Almanac for today. 68 so far, and I think we'll jump up into the 70s here pretty quickly. 48 was low this morning, so we gained 20 degrees in that short amount of time just because the air is dry. It's a good setup for that. No rainfall today. And the records, again, 88-17, set back in 1972 and 1966. Hey, here's a little history for you. This marks the date today that we hit the coldest temperature ever in the United States. It was back in 1971. Prospect Creek, Alaska got down to negative 80. I don't even know how you survived that, but uh, that was how cold it was back in 1971 in Alaska. That was apparently a pretty cold year. Uh, let's take a look at the satellite uh, here over the last few hours. And you'll see we've got perfectly clear skies across much of South Texas. The only cloud cover you'll find, you gotta go all the way up to LaGrange College Station where there's still some clouds hanging on. But we're going to see a perfectly sunny day. Temperatures as a result are coming up quickly. 63 degrees in Fredericksburg, 69 Uvalde, already 70 in Catula and around Bear County, mid to upper 60s. And again, we should be in the 70s here pretty soon, uh, just based on uh, the way the temperatures have been going. Uh, radar and satellites show that we've got, uh, we've got quite a bit of rainfall from Memphis down to New Orleans. And then as we zoom out, You'll see where the snow is, Omaha, Minneapolis, Chicago. This is going to be a pretty big snowfall maker for those up across parts of Michigan as the system moves off to the east. We're behind it, though, and behind it, you typically get some of that drier air, and we've got some northwesterly winds, and that's making for very comfortable conditions. One could argue that we have some of the best weather in the country right now. I guess Florida is a little bit warmer than we are, mid-70s, but everyone else is in the 20s and 30s and 40s. We've got 60s down here in South Texas, which is pretty nice. Outside right now, blue skies, 64 at the Port S.A., as we mentioned, 67 Stinson with a northerly wind and temperatures uh, holding in the 60s for the most part. Now we will be up around 72 for a high today. You'll still find some high temperatures in the 60s to our north and then mid-70s to the south. That is above average for this time of year. We're also going to see some gusty winds, too, already starting to pick up a little bit more, gusting to 21 miles per hour here in San Antonio and gusting to around 17 in Kerrville. Here's what the future cast looks like. Sunny skies next couple of days, so we're just going to go right on into Saturday. That's the day when we start to see some changes. More clouds shifting in Saturday morning. And then I'd say by about 5 o'clock, we'll start to see some showers, spotty showers developing, and that'll continue over to about midnight is the way it looks right now. And then Sunday morning, that rain moves out of here. So there's not a lot of time to get any sort of measurable, significant rain, but it's possible about a 30% shot, uh, depending on where you live. And then we'll see the clouds clear out Sunday afternoon. So we should salvage the second half of the weekend. Really, Saturday's going to be just fine, too. Just know there's going to be a couple showers late in the day. Breezy, sunny today, 72. Northwesterly winds, 10 to 15. And then tomorrow, 68, 64, Saturday, a little cooler just because the clouds will be increasing. 71 Sunday, some morning fog. And 70s next week. There's actually a cold front Tuesday. Knocks us That's down. a cold front? Knocks us down a whole two degrees. Oh. 
<laughs> brings a couple showers with it too. But these cold fronts have been pretty wimpy. Not saying that I'm complaining here, but uh, it, the, the we'll just, take wimpy if if we can have a nice mild winter. These cold fronts just aren't doing much for us. I'm still caught up on that negative 80 degree temperature yeah. in Alaska. I don't know I how you how that. do you breathe. I don't I don't, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure that hypothermia would set in almost instantly. <laughs> yeah, your eyes would freeze. Oh. I, I guess everyone stayed indoors I that day. I, I hope so. I think yeah. so. They survived. Jeez. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Justin. Matthew McConaughey leading an all-star cast in director Guy Ritchie's latest darkly humorous crime thriller. Yeah, the new crime comedy flies in from the UK this weekend. RJ Marquez has a look. Now, I can't be specific about the heroes and zeros, but our protagonist is a hungry animal. <laughs> our antagonist explodes on the scene like a millennial firework and has indirectly started a war. Matthew McConaughey stars as a drug baron whose empire is under attack in Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman. See, I've developed a reputation as a man who came up the hard way. You could say that there's blood on these pretty white hands. In the jungle, the only way a lion survived, not by acting like a king, by being the king. Richie returns to the roots he established with Snatch and Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. For audiences, that means violence and plenty of dry humor. These people are going to clean house, and you are part of that house. Is there a problem here, Fletcher? I see no problem at all. I forgot to wash my hands. There's only one rule in this jungle. When the lion's hungry, he eats. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. We have some breaking news that we need to get to you right away. Sources say former Bear County Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela has been indicted by a grand jury. Her, her attorney confirms that she has been indicted. He did not know on what charges, though. A Bear County source said that she had been indicted on at least one count of aggravated perjury, which is a felony. The source also said Parientes Vela's former captain, Mark Garcia, has also been indicted. The embattled constable in the midst of a campaign for Bear County Sheriff, despite having her offices raided by state and federal authorities in late September. Now, this is a developing story that we will continue to follow and of course have the latest on our news later on in the day and of course on KSAT.com. We thank you so much for joining us on our KSAT.com special newscast. Of course, if you want to continue to watch the impeachment hearings, uh, there is a special report currently underway on ABC News here on KSAT 12. SA Live starts right now.